Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to have a time of worship for the preacher steps in to deliver the least. He's Lord. He's Lord. He has risen. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every minute. In every time, confess that He says Christ is Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He has risen. Worship 
fairest of things Shall sing to my soul In the lily of the valley In the mellow night room I need to cleanse and make me fully whole Oh yeah, kings are of my Hallelujah Oh, he all oh, my grace as a king and all oh, my high dome. The temptation is my strong and mighty car. Yeah, I have hope for him for safety and all oh, my high dome. For my heart and now he keeps me by his side. Order. Hallelujah! 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 Oh! Yes, thank you, Jesus. Oh, He would never, never leave me, nor here forsake me. While I live by faith and do His blessed will. And all of fire about me, I'm not enough to fear. With this man, with my hand, oh, oh, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, nice one, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I so on the cross and follow out and And shall I fear to hold this God of God who speak? Oh, when the past is over, we shall wear a crown. Yeah, we shall wear a crown. Oh, we shall wear a crown. Oh, when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown in a new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, yeah. Wear a crown. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. We shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Dead horse for me to be, must I not stand the blood? Ah, it is my word, a friend to grace to help me on. Oh, hallelujah, 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 oh yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We shall welcome in a new Jerusalem. Well, a crown. Well, a crown. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the baptism.
church of God. Oh, brothers, we are turning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, the saints are turning. We are now the one. body we had one. I am a me. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, you want the Lord come for us. We'll sing to praise him. He is wonderful. Sing, only uh, believe to him by the preacher. Only believe. Only believe. Oh, no, no. 
Jesus. Our shoes are making that you cannot do. Let there be testimonies of your goodness. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much. And we bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. So once again, we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we welcome you again to the service this morning. And we thank God for his grace and mercy upon us. Yes, it has been his grace uh, that has brought us this far. And uh, maybe if the Lord will help us, next Sunday, God willing, we'll gather in the house of God. Amen. 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 So, yeah, just pray that we try to put everything together. So, next Sunday, God willing, we'll all be here and shout hallelujah Amen. to the King of Kings. Amen. So, uh, we, 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 
be with us as we try to put things together. So, and, uh, you know, we are in the, you know, abnormal days, but they said abnormal normal. So, when you come, we try to arrange the chairs, maybe we try, you know, families, and we see how it's going to be. So, we want all of us, when we come together, to cooperate. Yeah, so cooperate so that things will be, and uh, we try to do our best to follow the orders as the, the president has given to us. And, uh, you know, if you have big faith, praise the Lord, but consider somebody who has small faith. Yeah, so all those protocols that, that they have given, we try to observe everything, and then we walk by faith. So, thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for tuning in to this uh, broadcast and, uh, and, uh, and your prayers and, uh, and all your support. We really appreciate it. And special thanks to our young brothers, uh, the music that have been behind this instrument, and uh, our brother Isaac Yate, brother Kwesi, uh, brother Benezer, brother Anson, uh, Elijah, sister Phoebe, sister Mary. Ah, oh, brother Israel, brother. In fact, you have to give a special clap to these brothers. I think when we come together, we just give a special clap uh, to our brothers. Yes, they really, they've done marvelously well. And so we, we thank Almighty God. We thank you so much. We are very proud of you, brothers, that really have stood with us and, uh, and, and been with us. And, uh, you know, you made a lot of sacrifices. Oh, my. So we really, we really ask the Lord to bless them, brother. Uh, though they said don't shake them, but you can make them like this after the service next Sunday when you see them. And uh, because last time even married thief has to steal her phone from her. But uh, she's still here today, so praise the Lord. So uh, we, we thank God. It's a lot of sacrifice. We are not taking it for granted. It's a big sacrifice. And we pray the Lord to bless you all. And put it in your account in glory. And those that were praying for us, and uh, may the Lord bless you too. So we are grateful to the Almighty God, and uh, we, we believe He will take us through the rest of the journey. Let, maybe let's sing one song, uh, and uh, just before we, um, what song is that? Uh, 157, I think, did I write that one, 157? Or oh, which one is that? What do you have on your paper? Number 12, did you sing that already? Fifty-seven? I think number fifty-seven. Let's see. Is it fifty-seven? Yes. Uh, let's sing this the second rather. Okay. Touch us all. 
Everybody's messing from his Bible. Who is a deputy?
of the scripture and we want to speak on greater is he that is in us. Let's read from uh, first let's read from Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 verse 12 just uh, just to remind ourselves and encourage ourselves in these days. Hallelujah. God has been good to us. If he has brought us this far, he will take us through. Yes, God will take us through because it is his responsibility. Ephesians chapter 6. So we could have read from, read from verse 10, but let's just read verse 12. We know that after Paul has spoken and written, and finally, my brethren, and be strong in the Lord, and put on the armor, but then he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And he said, against powers. Look at that. We have not resting. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And he said, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against rulers of this dark world of sin, against spiritual wickedness, against, against, against. But let's read John chapter, first epistle of John. Four. First John chapter four. Verse four. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Shall we be seated? And uh, so, we, we thank Almighty God again for the opportunity to gather together to feed our souls with the word of life. And uh, it is always a blessing to read the word of the Lord. Sometimes, as if when you're reading, you should not just stop. Just keep reading it. Because it's blessing. Because it is the word of God. Man's words will fail. But his words will not fail. And so the apostle writes to the brethren and he said, Ah, my brethren. And he tells them to put on the old armor of God. He said, because, he said, for we restore. So, as we have been, we know. He said, for we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So the first thing is that we are wrestling. We are fighting. Huh? Some places, he said, Paul said, like he said, I have fought a good fight. So 
as we have been taught, Christianity is resting in. Resting it not with flesh and blood, but against principalities. Hmm. Against principalities. And he continued, and he said, against powers, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So against, 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 against. I think you've got about four against over there. Against principalities, one. Against powers, two. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, three. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Are we there? So we are resting against this. Against principalities, against this, against, against, against. But if God be for us, who can be against us and win? It's not flesh and blood. So we have been taught that Christianity is a battle. He said we are not in picnic, but we are in a battle. So the apostle tells us for you to make it, he said, put on the old armor of God. Not some of the armor. So he tells us the armor that we should put on. All right. Are we there? And he said, wherefore take unto you the old armor of God, that ye may be able to rest to, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loves get about with truth, and having on the blessed plate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shade of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Remember, he's a wicked one. And he is against us. He is against you. He is against me. So, the Bible tells us, for us to face this enemy, we should dress up and put on the old armor of God. So, it is not a play. It is a fight that you have to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then it tells us in John, I love it when I read it, he said, he said, little children, he said, you, you have already overcome. This is what he said, ye are of God. Ye are of God. Is there anybody is here of God? Yes, sir. Is it ye are of God? Amen. We are of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we are of God, then we are on the winning side. He said, Hallelujah. And he said, Oh, praise the Lord. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And have overcome them. So all this against. All this against, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this evil world, and against the spiritual wickedness in high places, you have overcome them because you have God. Hallelujah. Somebody is happy? Listen, against these powers, Principalities, spiritual wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But you have God and you have overcome them. And he said, Because greater is the one that is in you, greater is he that is in you, hallelujah, than the devil that is in the world, than the enemy you are fighting. Take note. 
The enemy is great. The enemy is great. The enemy is powerful. The enemy is cunning. The enemy is smart. The enemy is whatever. But you have overcome them. With all his smartness. With all his craftiness. With all whatever he is. Because you have God. Hallelujah. He said, because you have God. Hallelujah. Not in ourselves. Not in our own might. But because we are of God and the God is in us. And because of that, you have overcome them. He said, you have overcome them. Take note of that. Ye have got little children and have overcome them. We have overcome. Remember we had a sermon not long ago, more than conquerors. You have overcome them, whoever they are. Hallelujah. Whatever the opposition, whatever power, whatever forces, whatever they are, the Bible says you have overcome. Listen, don't just be looking at me. And don't just try to, you know, imagine and reason. And don't just look at yourself. Look at the one that is in you. Because what he says is that the reason why you have overcome is because greater is the one that is in you. So, if the greater one is not in you, the one that is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the prophet of God said. Overcome means to recognize the devil in every one of his tricks. A lot of people say there is no devil. It is just a thought. Don't you believe that? There is a real devil. He is just as real as you are or anybody. A real devil. And you must recognize him real. The one you are fighting, you must recognize him real because it's real. It's not just a thought. It's real. And he said, you must know he is a devil. Huh? You must know he is a devil. Then, the same time that you know, you recognize him, that he's a devil. The same time you recognize him as a devil, <laughs> hallelujah, and know that he is a devil and he's against you. Then, to overcome, you must recognize that the God in you is greater and mightier than he is. That is the one that is in you. That the one that is in you has already overcome him. And by his grace, you are more a match to him. Hallelujah. That is a real overcoming. You must recognize that he's a devil. And he's against you. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. You must recognize that he's a devil and he's against you. But he also said that you have to recognize the one that is in you. That the one that is in you is, might, is greater and mightier than him. And he has already been overcome. I read this scripture this morning in the book of Colossians. And I said, wow. It's there. We, and he said that Jesus poured powers and principality for us. Hallelujah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Colossians. Colossians said, 250 said, you can just read it, but he said, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphant over them in it. So, Jesus spoiled the powers. 
The powers we have that are fighting, Jesus spoiled them already. He spoiled principalities and powers. He defeated them. And he is in us. And when he's in us, then we are more than conquerors. Then you are more than a conqueror. Because greater is he that is in you. So this is a point you have to make sure of. Is he in you? Are you in him? And is he in you? Amen. Amen. This is what you have to be setting off. But if it's not, it's not too late. He can still get into you. Because the Bible says that by one spirit, we are baptized into one body. Hallelujah. By one Holy Ghost, one Holy Ghost baptism, to be, in, to be an overcomer, you have to be in Christ. And Christ has to be in you. It's not joining church. It's not recite, it's reciting some creed or apostles creed. It's to have that experience personal experience with him. For him to come and tabernacle in us. That is the only way you can overcome. Not in our own strength, not in our own might, but in him. Remember, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But with He in us, we can do all things. Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So when Christ is in us, then Christ is the fighter. Then Christ is our victory. Then Christ is everything to us. And then you have victory. Amen. The prophet of God said, there are only two powers under this sun, in this heaven, in this universe, on this universe. Two powers, two forces, two kingdoms, light and darkness, Christ and Satan. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. Light and darkness. Two forces. Every human being in this world is controlled by one of the forces. You are either controlled by God or by the devil. Oh, well, me, I don't do any bad. It's not like that. You were born in sin. You came into this world speaking lies. The way you came into this life is already condemned. And there is no righteousness of ourselves that can give us any way. That can make a way for us. Because the scripture says, all our righteousness is like 50 rats before Almighty God. Lord, help us. All we, the Bible says, have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. So no man has any chance. Re recognize that there is a devil and the devil is real. They said, you cannot reason with the devil. He will reason you out. He said, that is how he got our first parent in the garden. Hmm. Hallelujah. What did he do? He interrupted the program of God. 
When God made the first couple, they were defended, they were placed beneath or behind the word. The word is your shield. The word is our defense. The word is our protection. Right? As long as they sleep behind the word, they were safe. They were protected. Nothing could harm them as long as they were behind the word. And nothing can harm you as long as you stay behind the word. Amen. He said, but when the enemy came in, oh, everything was so peaceful. Everything was so nice. He said there was no headache. There was no backache. There was no sickness. There was no nothing. It was just peace. It was just peace. It was just sweetness. It was just our love. It was a lovely atmosphere. Everything that God made was so nice and beautiful. And everything was together. Until the enemy came in and caused them to disbelieve. The weapon that God gave them. The enemy does the same thing today. Our defense is God's word. And once it destroys your confidence in God's word, which is the promise of your day, because that is your weapon, and it causes you to disbelieve that word, you are finished. It disarms you. And when you are disarmed, how are you going to fight? Because it is a fight. We are in a battle. Amen. Hey, you must dress up as a Christian soldier. He said, when you are born, God intended that the life you should live for you to grow up or maybe a woman takes seed, and that seed is taken care of. The prophet said, if nothing interrupts that, that baby will grow up, will grow up in the womb, and the time of delivery comes, and it's born. And if nothing interrupts, he grows up like I am today, like you are today, you become a man or a woman. And then you become what God intends you to be. He said, now, when you are born, he said, okay, let me read up there. And all you old people, he said, in the resurrection, we turn back to young men and young women again. Isn't that marvelous? See, when you are old, most of us, we pass the bloom of life. When you are born, God intended that, intended that, intended that. And if nothing interrupts your life, you will become to a full stature of man or woman. Whatever he intended you to be, if there is not some interruption, if there is no some interruption, if nothing interrupts, then you grow up to be what God intended you to be. Because there is something that God had in his mind. So if nothing interrupts, because sometimes there can be problem and the seed will be aborted. Right? Or some deformity, something happens and somebody is giving birth in deformity. Something interrupts. And the prophet said, whatever interrupts the program of God is the devil. Satan does interrupt him. Satan does interrupt him. What did he do? Even in the garden, he interrupted it. He interrupted the peace. The atmosphere. The fellowship. He interrupted it by causing them to disbelieve. Causing them to reason the program, the plan, the relationship was interrupted. Nature was interrupted. 
The plan was interrupted. The prophet said, did you ever think that the color of air that you got when you was a young woman or about 20 or and you was a young man, do you realize that that will be the same color of air in the resurrection? There will not be gray hair in the resurrection. Hallelujah. The color of air that you are when you were young, nice, beautiful, great. That is the same color of air you are going to have in the resurrection. Because gray hair is a sign of death. I, I, you don't want to believe it here. Yeah. But anyway, even if you color your hair, it's still gray. It doesn't change it. You might look fine in the eyes of men, but not in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The prophet said, but in the resurrection, you are going to have the same air again. He said it's not replacement. The very thing that God is bringing him back again. Hallelujah. Why? Because all wrongs will be made right. Whatever caused the gray air, whatever caused the sickness, whatever caused the infirmity, and somebody burn like this, and all wrongs will be made right. So we, will, we are going back to what we were. The picture that God took of us before the word was. And then we'll be young and young and young forever. There'll be no gray hair over there. There'll be no pain over there. There'll be no sickness over there. Oh, hallelujah. What a promise God has given to us. Hmm. And you, young man, do you realize that that would be the same color of air in the resurrection? That's right. Just think, if a yellow grain of corn goes into the ground, a blue grain don't come up, a blue grain don't come up in its place. Does it? No. If you plant corn in the place, mango don't come up from that place. If you plant corn, millet will not come from there. What you have planted is what is coming out. So what God planted all in the beginning is what is coming forth again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And the prophet said, see, the old Christian principle is based on resurrection. The same one goes down is the same one that comes up. Whatever goes down is what comes up. The Christian has this assurance that God has given to us. Mm. So, the enemy caused them to reason. And while they reason, they were disarmed. And remember, he said, he uses that same weapon today. To cause you to reason. And the prophet said, If he can get you to disbelieve your weapon, that your weapon is not good enough, he has disarmed you. If he can get you to, be, to, to disbelieve in the weapon you are holding, and to let you know that your weapon is not good enough, he has disarmed you. That's what he did in the beginning to discredit the word of God. Did God really say this? God don't mean what he says. But God says what he means and means what he says. What he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the son of man. That is what he means. If he says, I will send you a light and a prophet before the great and the dreadful day of the Lord, that is what he means. Hallelujah. The prophet said, don't you think I am beside myself? That is true. I know what I'm talking about. Men of Hannah, women, you who believe in God, 
you who claim to have, to have the spirit of God in your heart, if you are sick or needy or you've got the weapon, there is no fight. You've got a weapon there to fight that sickness with you. You've got the weapon there to fight if you are sick. He said you've got the weapon there to fight that sickness with. It's in you. God gave it to you. The weapon to fight is in you. God gave it to you. And he said, he said, why will you stand back like a coward? Why will you stand on the sidelines? Let's follow the captain. Let's follow him that went to Calvary. When he went to Calvary, he was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes, we were healed. He said, take that what it gives you and fight sickness and sin. Take what it gives you and fight sickness and sin. Hallelujah. Fight unbelief. Fight unbelief away. Tell the devil he's a liar. Christ said he has overcome the world. Christ said he has overcome the world. Tell the devil Christ has already overcome. He said, be of good cheer. I have already overcome. Tell the devil he's a liar. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the power of Christ in you than the sickness that you have in your body tonight or this morning. Greater is the power of Christ than the little besetting sin that you can't overcome. Let's take that Holy Spirit and fight the devil down and walk out victorious as the heroes of the cross. Young men, young women, Brothers and sisters, greater is the one that is in us. If you are born again, to be born again, you need to repent. Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born a day, he can never see the kingdom of God. Repentance and remission of sin will continue to preach it. Because that is what he told them. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached unto our people. Amen. And the prophet said, if the unbeliever, the sinner has to repent, the backslider need more repentance. Repent of what? Unbelief. If you come to church and you don't believe the word of God, you're unbeliever. It is sin to disbelieve the word. And if you disbelieve the word, you cannot have victory. You cannot win. Are we there? It is sin. It is sin to disbelieve the word of God. Adam, that's the problem they had. Eve. God said, don't stop. He said, the mistake that Eve made was she stopped to reason. And when you begin to reason, hey, Satan will sweep you off. He will just sweep you out of your feet. Off your feet. The believer takes what God said. God says so. That's finished. Are we there? Oh, yeah. Our enemy, listen, he's strong. Hey. Don't underrate that devil power. No, don't, don't try it. He has been in the game for long. So don't underrate him. That's why the prophet said, it is not how close you get to sin without sinning. It is how far you keep your distance away. He said, because sin has long claws. He told a story of one time a lady, a young sister, that came, became converted and uh, 
He used to go to dances or something like that. And one day, she was just passing. She passed in front of, uh, you know, some of these dancers or whatever, whatever. And the music was playing. And she peeped. She saw an old friend. Oh, so this, so this guy is still doing these things. Oh, man. When grace has brought me out. And this fellow is still, oh, wow. Oh, Lord, help me. I, I wish I can talk something to this guy. She stopped. By the time she realized, she was inside. Not only inside, she was in the hands of man. She was dancing. She thought she was going to speak to somebody. She realized she was talking to it. The spirit came upon her. So, young people, young men, mama, papa, watch it. Oh, I sit with my friends. They, I, they drink beer. I don't drink it. Hey, what are you sitting there for? What are you sitting there for? When we are, we are fighting against spiritual wickedness. Wickedness. I'm telling you, people can be very wicked. If you don't know, there are many that have suffered because of that. That the people they thought were friends and loved ones messed them up. Put some things in them, their drinks, or even coke. I'm drinking coke. Hey, don't, don't try it. Keep your distance away. What are we fighting against? Principalities. Against powers. Forces. Against rulers of this dark world. Rulers of darkness. Wicked spirit. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, for you to make it in this hour, you must put on the whole armor of God. Get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Get the life of Christ in you. Hallelujah. The prophet said to overcome, you must keep the life of Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, listen. Things are going to be tougher, intensified. Don't think that, oh, it's, no, 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 no. We are still in the battle, and every round goes higher and higher. But what are we talking about? There is somebody in the believer. Yes, the one that is in the believer, no matter what we come, no matter what we go, he's the same. His poor powers, his poor principalities, he overcame powers, he overcame principalities. So when he is in you, when Jesus is in you, when the captain is in you, when the mighty conqueror is in you, you will conquer all because he is the same conqueror all the time. It does not matter whether you are old or you are young. Or once he's there, hallelujah, he will conquer. Because remember, we are going to have trials and we are going to have challenges. Don't say, let the devil think you are the only one. You are not the only one. Every Christian, every one of us, we have our challenges. We have the battles we are fighting. Hallelujah. And, and you know what? Every stage of life and the challenges that is there. Huh? When you are not married, you are a young woman, you have your challenges. A young man, you have your challenges. Today, some of you, when you need something, you just go before Mama. I need this. Wherever she gets it from, that's not your business. I say, I need this. Hey, Papa, I need it. She will look for you. But one day, you stay on your own. Some of you today, you don't even appreciate common tea roll soap. You just need soap to buy yeah, this one. When you are on your own, you will know that it's not easy to buy tea roll. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Ah, you don't even buy pure water. Because when water is finished, mama, the water is finished. Daddy, the water is finished. Common pure water, you can buy. Mama has to buy it. Papa has to buy it. Whatever she get the money from, whatever she get the money from, that's not your business. He has to supply. May God help us to appreciate them. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, I want to get married. I know because I'm not married. That's why they talk to me anyhow. Go and marry. When that book is open, it has its own pages. You open a new book, you get new pages. Hallelujah. 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 A new book is open, new pages. You take a new book, it has pages. And stories. Are we there? So what are you saying? Are you putting fear? No, no, no. There's no fear. But what I'm telling you that you need an anchor. Because, listen, you are going to meet it. This enemy, we are going to face it. And the closer we get, the more intensified the battle. But what is it? Greater is the one that is in you. So what we are talking about is to make sure that greater one is in you. The one that conquered both sin and the unseen world. The one that said, I have overcome the world. You need to know that yes, he is in me. Because you come to a spot, you have to be there alone, you and him. You have your own trials. You have your own challenges. And that is why you have to make sure that the one that is greater is there. Listen, we've had uh, the, the brother as they preached the other day, the calm before the storm. He said, This might just be the calm before the storm. Because there is a prophecy, there is a promise that one day the doors will be closed. Thank God we say we are coming next week. But there is coming a time. There is coming a time when it will not be next week. When it will not be you and your mother again, or you and your father, or you and your husband, or you and your wife, it will be you alone. That you got to face it. What will you do if you don't have an anchor? What will you do? Where will you go if you don't have an anchor? The anchor is not church membership. It's not belonging to Entan Tabernacle or Unique Fellowship or Association Fellowship. Or it, it has nothing to do with it. There is only one place. Hallelujah. Amen. Only one place. And that is in Christ Jesus. That is what they had at the beginning. And that is what we need. So he said, take what he has given to you to fight this battle with. Oh. Well, when you come to Christ, everything is, uh, 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 everything is, when you come to Christ, it begins. Now, when you are on the other side with the devil, you know how oh, he said, everything is sloppy. Yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you become a Christian, hmm, you are right in the place then 
to be drove by these things. You just put yourself up a target. When you become a Christian, you put yourself what? As a target. So don't be complaining in memory and why me and all, me, all my friends have gotten married, all my friends have gotten job to do, all my friends have gotten husbands, all my friends have gotten this and they got this and they got that. Your friends are not you. Huh? Your friends are not you. You have a different name. I can't hear you say amen. You have a different name. You were born at a certain day, at a certain place, and you were born for a purpose. I, I, I was born for a purpose. Everybody is born for a purpose. So, the Bible says, they that compare themselves to themselves, comparing yourself to others, the Bible says those people are not wise. Amen. Oh, I started working before this brother. I started working before this one. I used to feed that brother. Fine, praise God for that. God might have used you to feed that brother. But look at that brother today. It might just to give you a trial. So, will you become envious because of that brother? And this one, I fed them. Yeah, you fed them. And God used you to raise that fellow up. Amen. Amen. So what do I do? Yes, because the other day I did it, you also must do this for me. No. If the fellow is wise, he will know what to do. You know, sometimes we become greedy. I say sometimes we become greedy. We become covetous. And we become selfish. I know everybody will be quiet today about it. May God help us. Amen. Listen, don't be greedy. Oh, I want to get, look at this one. No, 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 no. And don't be selfish. Yeah. This is mine. This is, oh, Lord. Don't do it. Don't be greedy. Don't be covetous. And don't be selfish. Because Christianity is living for others. Not living for yourself. If I'm able to do something for somebody, I get happy. Because that is what brings happiness. To live for others. If you want to be happy, make somebody happy. Then you will be happy. Because Jesus didn't live for himself. So you cannot be a Christian and be selfish. A Christian is a Christ-centered person. Amen. Hey, brethren. This recordings that we have been, you know how much contribution people are putting in it? People are making investment. People buy things, oh, buy this, buy generator, buy cameras, buy, people are doing it. If you see it, some people are doing it, oh. Oh, the church, what church? Church don't have money. Where is the church? Is it the building? The building is not the church. The church is the call at once. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The call at once. So there are people that have been called out and they know that all in life is to live for Christ. Like one brother said to me, he said, look, a brother told me, a pastor told me, he said, look, we are just custodians. All that we have, we are just custodians. God just gave it to you. It's not for you. It's for somebody. It's for his people. You have been put in a place of trust to take care of somebody, to minister to somebody, to take care of God's people, to make your mother happy, to make your father happy, to make your brother happy, to make your wife happy, to make your husband happy, to make the pastor happy, to make the congregation happy. Christianity is Christ-centered. Yeah. Me, me, I don't have anything. Keep 
confessing that and you will never have anything. Yes. Because your body will obey your confession too. Mm. God help us. Oh brother, I, I, this is not what I'm expecting you to preach. Praise the Lord, I'm glad that that's not what you're expecting me. Because I'm not here for you, I am here to hear from him. We, we are getting ourselves ready. Listen, where you have been put in the trust, a place of trust, God has committed something to your care to take care of it. God gave you something to take care of it. If he gives you money, it's not for yourself. Whatever he gives you, the voice to sing. That's why the prophet rebuke or condemn Elvis Presley, but boom, he said they use the God-given gift to inspire the words of devils. They go to church and they go out, they sing Christian songs there, but it's of the devil because they sing it, they're going to run people to make money. He said, never use the God giving you anything to make money. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are to seek for his glory. Yes. What will make him happy? It's not for sure. It's to glorify the king. And listen, when it comes to the things of God, young people, young men, young women, mothers and fathers, let us give our best. Give your best to the Lord Jesus. Give your best service to the king. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, you young sisters that are not married yet, you are with your parents at all. Give them the best service. Amen. You can't say amen to that. Give your fathers the best service and your parents the best service before you leave home. Because you are not coming back there under that man again. You are going to take another name tomorrow. So whilst you are there, give your best. When you marry, give your best to your wife. To your husband, let the family be the best. Services to the king. Our interest should be the kingdom of God. The prophet said, God first. In everything, God first. Then your family, then yourself. God first. We should be interested in the affairs of God's people. Not so much at my family. It's fine. But we should go beyond that. Our interest must be in the kingdom of God and the people of God. What can we do when we have been placed here in the kingdom? What are we going to do to promote the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Huh. He said now. You are dressed up now. You've shaved. You've combed your hair. You put on a uniform. You've got a gun in your hand. Let's go. You are in a battle. Not to show off. But to fight. Fight. Sure. When the temptation rise with the spirit and the shade of faith, buckle off and move on. See, that's right. Oh, put on the old armor of God. Why do we put on an armor? Why do we put on an armor if you are not going to fight? All soldiers are dressed to fight, not to show off. Also, there's a dress to fight. Hey, but the other day I was reading in the paper or something, he said, I think one young man, he went to training. He went to join the army. He went to training. He said, ah, he went to go home. The 
put in YouTube or somewhere. They, 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 the young man. He, he said, I don't want to continue. He, went, he was crying for the mother. You think wearing military uniform is for free? Hallelujah. It's not for free. Christianity is not for free. Christianity, you must fight. The prophet said, oh, I am telling you, when, as soon as you say you got the Holy Ghost, Satan got every gun right on you, shooting you. Then you got the old armor on. Then, take the shade of faith, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, buckle on, shut yourself with the gospel, and take the old middle piece here, the blessed prayer, and pull up the clinch on it, and Tighten yourself up a little bit and get ready for it because it's coming. Don't you worry. Yes, sir. You are going to have to, you're going to have plenty of trouble. But remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The enemy is going to fight you. But hey, Oh, hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you. Listen, church, God don't send us out and just like that. No. He fortified the church with himself. It's very safe. The Holy Ghost is Jesus himself. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I, I will come to you again. I will come to you again. He said, when I come, they will not know me. They will not support you. Because I've been with you. You know my ways. You know my nature. You know my character. You know the way I do things. So you will recognize me. There is one thing, young men and young women and brothers and sisters, that you don't have to play with. You have to make sure you get the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God in you. And when the spirit of Christ comes in, you will live a Christ-centered life. It will take away selfishness. Then you can say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. Mm. You must recognize that. Huh. You must recognize that God in you is greater and mightier than he. That's the one that is in you. He that is in you has already overcome him, the devil. And by his grace, you are more than a match to him. Oh, hallelujah. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And then, you know, the devil is a liar. He is a liar. Whatever he said, he said, Satan, you're a liar. Yeah. You cannot win. Yeah. Amen. Listen, like I was, when you are fighting, it's fight. Oh. Yeah. Fight is fight. Yeah. Prophet said, we must use every gift at our disposal. And I tell people always what my father told me when I was small. I was fighting with one of my cousins or nieces and he bite me. Hey, the thing pay me. I was crying. Say, huh? My brother said, don't cry. He said, tomorrow, if you're also fighting with somebody, you can't fight. He said, bite the fellow. My father told me, he said, your teeth is part of your body. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I never thought of it because when you bite someone, they say you are not strong. But when I heard it from my father, I said, oh, yeah. Because he, 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 my father was a fighter. Yeah, so he said, he, said, he said, you have to defend yourself. Use every gift. Use everything. Anything available must be used. It's in my pocket. When I am out and the battle is tense, so the, because I fight big, big boys, I was fighting. So that is difficult. Fight is everything, not easy. If you are not brave, you will not be able to make it. So that the fellow is bigger. But if I'm fighting and I remember, 
what my father told me, I changed the tactics. When I remembered his word, oh, that will always remember the word of God. That will always remember the promise of God. Oh, when I remember that, my father said this. I'm telling you, I changed it. I stopped wasting my strength here and there. I changed it. I open mouth now. And, and interestingly, nobody wants to be beaten when he's fighting. Nobody wants anybody to bite him. I don't know why. So when I remember that, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll be free. And somebody said, you see that you are biting me. Did I mind him? I didn't mind him. I'm biting you. You're also hitting me. I did that to somebody coming to school. The night. I was in elementary school. I think primary school somewhere. There. He came that day with bandit. They said, what happened? He said, I should go bite me. I said, correct. He never tried to fight me again. Oh, yes. God gave us weapon. God gave us his word. Listen, don't let anybody dis destroy your trust and your confidence in God's word. Because the word is your shield. The word is our defense. Don't let the devil tell you that it doesn't mean it. It means it. Everything that God says is means that. And don't let the devil tell you it's not for you. It's for you. Because the Bible says unto you and to your children and as many as the Lord our God shall call. Has God called you? If God called you, then the Holy Ghost is for you. If God calls you, then salvation is for you. If God calls you, the redemptive blessing is for you. If God calls you, healing is for you. If God calls you, every promise that Jesus died for is for you. Holiness is for you. Purity is for you. Hallelujah. Victory is for you. Hallelujah. Mm. He said, remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You must realize that the Holy Spirit that is in you has already overcome these things. And he's in you. And you can overcome by him. That's exactly sensible. Exactly the way the scripture is written. Overcoming, notice overcome. The God that is in you is greater than the one that is in the devil. The devil outside. The God of this word is not as great as the God of heaven, which is in you. No more than darkness can stand light. Darkness can never stand light. The Bible says, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. There is no way darkness can comprehend light. And if God is in you, it's greater, our God is greater than coronavirus. Amen. I say our God is greater than coronavirus. And until God has finished with you, no coronavirus can take you away. Yes, believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Don't forget he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. If you look back, you are condemned. Then you are still in the world. But if you are living above that, then he that is in you has led you above the darkness. He said, look at, like the lily. look at the lily. He's above the darkness of the mud. He's above the darkness of the muddy waters. He's in the light, reflecting the beauty that was put in him before he left the mud. Take note. The lily Reflecting the beauty that was in it before it was put in the mud. That is something that has been predestinated. The life that has been predestinated in him. And he rose above the mud. He overcame the dust, the muddy water, everything. He, he rose above it. So, 
Rise above the mud. Rise above the darkness. Rise above reasoning. Rise above worldliness. And worldly thinking. And worldly dressing. And worldly behavior. And worldly actions. Worldly conduct. Rise above it. And conduct yourself as a son and a daughter of the king. You remember the story of the slave that they took to uh, the western world and uh, a young man, he was a slave like any other and they took him away from home. They showed him into slavery. Huh. Well, there was something in him that made him to live above spirit of slavery. He kept his spirit alive. He didn't do what everybody was doing. He was a slave, all right. He ate with the same people, with the people, with friends and things like that. But, hey, you can't push him here and push him there. He lived such a life until the master took notice of him. What, what this, guy, this guy is very proud. Why is he behaving this way? Why is he doing this? Hey, brother, you must know your position. Jesus knew his position. That's why Satan could not push him. Satan could not make Jesus to do his biddings. Satan wanted Jesus to do his biddings. If you are the son of God, why not this? If you are the son of God, why not this? If you are right, why you have not gotten husband till now? Your unbelieving friends are getting married. If any of you parents will ever say that to your child, God have mercy upon you. Your friends are married. Your friends are doing this. I'm not my friends. I am not my friends. I am what I am. So if you're a parent, don't cast such a notion to your children. Don't look down. Don't despise your daughter or your son. Your child. Because it's not like somebody else. Amen. Don't do it. Same way I know she's You don't do it that way. If there is anything to do, you pray for your daughter. You pray for your son. And assure your son and your daughter. Let your mom, your children know that you care. Let your children know you are interested in them. Let your children know you are praying for them. Let them know God has a time. And God has a purpose. And God has a cause. And nothing will change it. Praise the Lord. Because everybody came under a different star. We are all different stars. So don't push your sons and your daughters into things that tomorrow they'll be regretting. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. May the Lord help us. Rise above the man. Look at the lily. He said, under the man, he said, but he comes out, he fights his way. He rises. He rises to become what has been placed in it before he went to the mud. So there is something that has been predestinated into you. That God has placed in you as his daughter, as his son. Rise to the occasion. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Fight your way out. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. And uh, when I think about when you plant corn or even all this blade, this green grass blade, how they are able to break through the earth, I don't understand it. When you put a seed and you bury the seed, you cover it. And that tiny blade will break through the sand, break through the earth, and come out. God is great. Amen. And nothing can hold life. 
and that thing fight out and comes out. There is something that God placed in us. And as a daughter of God, that's why he placed the Holy Ghost in you. With the Holy Ghost there, which is the life of God himself, nothing can hold it. The power that is told, there are potentials in every seed to transform itself into the plant for which God has ordained it to be. You have been ordained to be a son, a daughter of God, a daughter, son of God. Victorious son of God. Victorious daughter of God. To be an overcomer. Hmm. Reflecting the beauty that was put in him before he left the mud. Amen. Now, oh, the prophet said, I feel shouting, like a shouting Christian. What was in there by God? What was in there by God at the beginning? It placed itself. It pressed its way through. Overcome. It overcame the shell. It overcame the mud. It overcame the waters. It overcame everything. Huh. And was an overcomer. And reflected the beauty and the glory of God. Hey. If that lily has to come through the water, struggle to, do you know other things, they fall into water, they die? Huh? Other things, you can't, you put it, plant, take your cone, plant it, put it in the water, plant it in the water. It can't survive. It cannot survive. There are some plants, when the water is there, they are finished. Because they are not made to stand in water. There are others, they thrive in water. When there is water, they are happy. Hallelujah. See, that's why also, you must find where God wants you to be. Are you following that? You must find where God wants you to be. Don't just, oh, look at the lily, and it's so wonderful. Experience that he has through the water. You cannot make it. Like I said, listen, your strength lays or lies in the recognition of your position. To know where is your position so that you will not be tossed here and there. You must find your position. And when you are in your position, hey, nothing can move you from there. You are God-given place as a son of God. Oh, hallelujah. And you stand at your post of duty. The gate of hell will never prevail against you. The prophet said, that is the way every believer does. That is the way every believer does. That is the way Noah did. That is the way Lot did. That is the way, look what a mess he was in. That is the way Moses did. That is the way Joshua did. That is the way Daniel did. That is the way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. That is the way John the Baptist did. That is the way Zachariah and Elizabeth. That is the way Simeon. That is the way Anna. Every one of them, they overcame the mud that there was around them and packed into them, stuck their head above, above the thing, and shone forth the glory of God. That is, that's the way a real Christian does. The mud around them, the things back around them, they, they stood, they fight, they fight and they possess it. And your man is not a bed of roses. Young women, it's not bed of roses. Mothers, it's not bed of roses. Husbands, it's not bed of roses. Wives, it's not bed of roses. Young men, you, you must fight. But I have one thing to tell you. If you fight, you win. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Than the things of the world, than the pride, than the fornication, that all this religiosity, religious spirits. You must fight to win. And if we fight, we'll win. 
Remember, Jesus saw us. How he's done it. In his 40 day temptation. He was tempted above every man that was ever or could be tempted in the temptation of Jesus. Watch, he show us how he's done. Look, he show us how he's done. How did he do it? By the word. Amen. That is how he done it. For he was the word and Jesus said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Hallelujah. You are back to the word again. The promise, the word of promise. What is the word of promise? In, what is the word of promise to every Christian? Greater is he that is in you. The word of promise to every Christian is, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the word. Then how, how, how do I overcome? Not me, but the word that is in me. The word is God. Then I overcome the things of the word. Because it is the word in me. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, then ask what you will. Just keep pressing up. You are coming to the top. As sure as anything can be. Hallelujah. Keep pressing. Keep believing. You are coming to the top. As sure as anything can be. And remember, what is the word? Christ is the anointed one. Huh. When the word, that anointed word is, is, what is, what is in you? That is greater. What is in you that is greater? He said, it is Christ. The anointed, the anointed. God. The God that was in Christ is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then, if he is in you, it is not you anymore living. It is him living, see? The word is living in you. And greater is he that is in me. Greater is the word of God in you. Than any demon. Than any sickness. Than any disease. Whatever they are. Greater is the God that is in you. Because the one that is in you is the creator. Oh God help us. As we were speaking last Sunday on the they limited God. They said, if God did this, can he do this also? Ah! If he opened sea for you to pass, you are asking whether he can provide bread too. Open sea and bread, which one is which? And the Bible said, he made the waters to stand as a heap. A wall. This water he opened and he stood here and there. The water became a fence. And they march through. They walk through. Not, not step across. It was a journey. Days they went through. Two million people plus animals plus goat, chicken, ducks, turkeys, whatever they are, camels, horses, goat, cows, Wow. Everything. And they all passed through the sea. He made their way through the sea. Oh, greater was he that was in Moses than the sea. Greater was the one that is in Moses. He opened the sea. Wonderful. Oh, brother, we should not forget the wonders of our God. We should not overlook it. Listen, saints. We have not come this far just for nothing. Corona has killed a lot of people, even in our country, and the world as a whole. Coronavirus has granted everything. Nations are confused. Leaders are confused. But the bride is not confused. Because greater is it that is in me than the coronavirus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We should believe the word of the Lord. Like somebody just saying, until God has finished with us, nothing can take us from here. Oh, hallelujah. When God has finished with us, then we are finished with this word. Then we want to go. We don't want to stay here again once God finished with us. We want to live and go. We want to get out of here. 
Hallelujah. Because he has finished with me, what do I have to be here for again? He said, Satan. He said, the water, Noah could not be drawn in the flood until the purpose of God had been finished. He could not burn up the Hebrew children. Satan could not burn up the Hebrew children until the purpose of God had been finished. He could not kill Job with boys, sicknesses, and troubles until the purpose of God has been finished. Neither could the lions eat Daniel until God's purpose has been finished. Neither could death and old age take Abraham until the purpose of God has been finished. Neither can he take you or can he take me until the purpose of God of our life is finished. Nothing can take us. Nothing can take us, brothers and sisters. You have to believe in the Lord. You have to hold on to the word of the Lord. Because God's promises are yea and amen. Yes, because greater was he that was in Daniel than the lions. Listen, greater was he that was in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego than the fire. Greater was he that was in Daniel. Greater was he that was in Job than the boys and the sicknesses and the viruses of that day. Church, the same God is the God we are talking about today. Brother Brenham said, listen, today we need divine healing worse than we, we ever need it. Today, we need divine healing worse than ever, worse than ever needed it. And as the days go on and on and on, so will it be more and more needed. Divine healing will be more and more needed. And it will come to pass after a while that unless a man is sealed with the Holy Ghost, it's hard to tell. He's laid himself open to all kinds of things. For remember the scripture says, come not nigh any of those who has the seal of God in their foreheads. When the tremendous place begin to fall, we are at the junction at the crossroad now. We need divine healing. We need the supernatural. More than ever before. My brothers, and we should not limit God. Don't limit God. Because God is the same. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you, my brother. If you are born again, if you have the Holy Ghost, then the one that is in you is greater than any sickness, than any disease, than any chronic headache, or whatever you might call it. Or backache or stomachache. Oh, church, there is nothing that God cannot do. I'm telling you. Because I believe, if you believe that the dead will be raised one day, why are you limiting God? Father Branham said, God can speak and dinosaurs will come right down. He said, big animals. He said, and they will feed the whole land if he wanted to be. The flies and the fleas that came from to Egypt. Where did they come from? God spoke. Yes. Hallelujah. And they came. The one that spoke and they came, spoke and they went out. God give us good health to enjoy. And the devil came to interrupt it. The one that created the wind, he spoke back to the wind. Go. So God gives you good health. The devil comes in. Then God said, out. Didn't Jesus said, ask what you will? When he met Bram Batimo, he said, what do you want me to do for you? If God is said, what do you want me to do for you? Then you begin to think. Then you begin to reason. Then the enemy wants you to disbelieve yourself and disbelieve your God. Are you correct? So, even before you ask, you have already doubted. Like somebody was praying. He said he was praying for the mountain to move behind his house. In the morning, he looked and said, yeah, I thought that much. The mountain is still there. So, he didn't believe. 
He said, I thought as much. But they said, when you ask, believe it. Because, listen, greater is the one that is. We should not limit God. He's still great today as he was then. He's the same God that we are talking about. My brothers and my sisters, young men and young women. We should not underrate him. And we should never limit him. Because he's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. As we step in, we are coming to church. We start to come to church. Hey, let your faith be in God. Even when you are going out, let your faith be in God. Because even the medical doctors, are what they don't even know what it is. Tomorrow they said, is this. Tomorrow they say, is that. But our God knows all about it. And remember, greater is Jehovah in you than coronavirus. Greater is Jehovah in you than cancer. Greater is Jehovah in you than TB. Greater is Jehovah in you than meningitis. Greater than appetite B or C or A or whatever they are or whatever. Greater is the God that is in us. And he said, I am the Lord that heals all your diseases. I am the Lord. I change it not. What he did in the wilderness, he's still doing it today. What he did yesterday, listen, we are his people. We are the elect. We are the chosen one. Let's recognize who we are. Because Brother Branham said, Jesus had faith in the word of the Lord. He had faith in what God said he was. And he believed it. He said, it is written of me. He believed it. He said, destroy this body. In three days, I'll raise it up. Because it is written. And he believed it. And that is why when the enemy came, he defeated the enemy with it is written. The word says so. The word says so. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If hands is laid on you and the devil come and he say, well, uh, the man that lay hand on, hands on is not correct. Say, I don't care about that. Hands have been laid on me. And that's what God said. I believe it. Because even people, Brother Branham said, when the people go even to the witch doctors and they said, do this. And they, he said, it is their faith in God. Because they believe they are contacting God through that means. So God is the only healer. So I don't care who he uses. I want to be free. And I take his word. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hi, don't worry. I've been suffering for this. I don't care. Even now. The matter said, Lord, if you have been here. But even now. If you have been here. I wish you have come before this. But even now. And the situation changed. Because he believed the word. He said, greater was he. That was in Joshua. That he could stop the sun and stop the moon. He stopped creation. He stopped nature. And there were men and women of like passions as we are. May God help us, saints of God. Let's walk by faith. Let's keep pressing on. As we go out, well, these things we are facing, we are still facing it. And worse things might, than this might come. Worse than corona might come. Hey, brother. I'm telling you, the prophet of God said, this is the last days. He said things will happen that even cancer will be like a toothache. Worse things. But the Bible says, I am the Lord that he let all your diseases. Greater is he. Greater is our God. Greater is the Holy Ghost. That is in me. That any devil, that any temptation, that any power of darkness. And this is where we want to build our faith on. The prophet said, that's where the Christians stand. Greater is he. That is the promise. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The people, the powers we are wrestling with, our God is greater than them. We are fighting against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Oh. In high places. But greater is he that is in us. Look at your mother. Look at your father. Look at your husband. 
Look at your children. Say, Mama, greater is our God. Greater is the one that we are serving than the one that is in the in the in the in the in the in the, oh, in the lions. Oh, can you imagine a man being thrown to the lions after the lions have been starved? Hey, he went to the lions, then he came back. Because it has not been ordained for him to go that way. You might be so sick. You might be so sick. They might think you are going, but you will not go. Because there have been people that have been very, very sick. And somebody just walked, pfft, he fought like chicken, he's gone. And somebody is right on bed and he's struggling and he comes out. Isn't God wonderful? Oh, they cannot say amen for even here. Don't be surprised. This is the word of the Lord. Don't let the devil make you to think that you are not in the normal. Those people live by the grace of God. And this is our day. This is your day. The same God. If you have the Holy Ghost. The same God that was in Daniel is in you. The same healer. The one that shut the mouth of lion is in you. The one that gives grace to the brothers. They were thrown into the lion's den. And they stood firm. They said, we pledge allegiance to the Lamb of God. They said, we will not bow. We will not bow. We will not give up. That same God is in you. Whatever God, whatever way, God has ordained for you to go through, he gives grace to go. He gives strength to stand. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to worry. Just believe. Whatever be your Lord, whatever be my Lord, give me grace, God. To hold on to your word. Knowing that greater is the one that is in me. If you know the one that is in greater, greater in you, you don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. You just have to believe. As he did yesterday, I can't so tired to think about. He opened the rock. And the Bible, he made water to gush out. Water. And it became a, like stream and river behind them. The water running behind them. In the wilderness. What can't he do for you, sister? What can't he do for you, brother? You're looking for a job? He's able to provide you a job. Oh, they are dismissing people, sacking people. He's able to keep your own. He's able to provide. He's able to make a way. Where there is no way, where there is no job, he provides job. Where there is no food, he provides food. It's the same God that we are talking about. And dear ones, may God help us to believe and cast down reasons and take that promise away. Don't let the devil destroy your confidence in the word of the Lord. In this hour we are living in, if not, you cannot get anywhere. God be with us, saints of God. To continue to confess, to continue to trust, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater was the one that was in David. Oh my goodness. Think about it. Look at Goliath. A man of about nine feet six inches. One man height, nine feet, nine feet six inches. And here was a David. Even Saul was afraid. And here was a David. Oh, hallelujah. A boy. Maybe smallish like Ebenezer here. Oh, yeah. Ebenezer is the smallest here. Amen. And then, here comes this giant there. And everybody was afraid. Hey. Nobody was ready to go. Look at, you don't get sense. What are you going to do? Because even King Saul said, he might be thinking, what is wrong with David? He said, my son, you are just a youth. He said, this man has been a war, a man of war from his youth. But greater was the one that was in David than the one that was in Goliath. And when he comes out and, and Goliath begins to curse him, David had a revelation. He said, this is an uncircumcised Felician. This one is not part of the covenant. It's not in the covenant. It's not circumcised. No matter his size, no matter the name the doctor call it, Goliath, this, that, it has nothing to do with it. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by anything. It is by the power of God. It's by the Holy Ghost. Effectual servant of the prayer of the righteous availeth much. 
David believed in God. Mm. May God help us that our faith will be in the word of the Lord. When we are able to focus on God's word, we'll make it. And as he went to meet that man there, he took a stone. Because his revelation was that this man, he said, let, let not any man's heart fail because of this uncircumcised Philistine. So this man is already out of the will of God. He's a Philistine. He's not circumcised. He's not born again. He's not in the covenant. I'm the son of the covenant. Ah, there's a promise. There is a covenant. I'm part of it. He believed the word. He held on to the word. Because when he went and Goliath was cursing and abusing him. Ah, he said, forget about it. You come to me in the name of the God of the Philistines, which are no gods. But I come to you in the name of the God of Israel. My God will deliver you and I will cut your head. He went in that and he had the victory. Because greater, he had the revelation of the one that was in him. Because remember, he was always talking about God. He was not talking about the doctor. They said cancer is like this. They said cancer is like this. And they said cancer is this. And they said this is that. All those things, cancer, can, uh, get quote, sicknesses, they are interruptions. They come to interrupt our lives. They come to shorten our lives. But we have a promise. That's why the Bible says the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. And today, the Son is in us. He is the head. We are the body. So what Jesus did yesterday is doing it today in the church. God bless you. You love him? Oh, greater is he that is in me. How great is our God. How great is his is the greatest of all. Is the great. greatest of all. Is forever the same. Forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. Put your trust in me. And Put your trust in me. Put your trust in me. He has promised Oh.
about it. Greater is he that is in me. You believe it's in you? You believe it's in you? You believe he that is in you is greater? It's greater than fear. It's greater than worry. It's greater than sickness. It's greater than corona. It's greater than malaria. It's greater than fever. It's greater than ulcer. It's greater than TB. It's greater than any sickness. The one that is in us is greater than the devil that is in the world. And in him, we are more than conquerors. He's in us. And because he's in us, we have the victory. Let's sing victory is mine. Jehovah, he is sent by you. 
on to this day, Peter. Oh, yeah, I give you valley. Let's send you by eight and eight. Let's send you by eight and eight. Oh, victory, victory. Let's have life of victory. Victory, victory. Victory, all the time. I see who believe yes, and divine is here. Oh, victory, oh, victory, victory. Let's go, God, for victory. Victory, victory, all the time. I see who believe yes, and divine is here. On to your Let's have love for victory, 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 victory all the time. As Jehovah lives, yes, and divine he has all to do to do. I say victory, victory, Jehovah, rocks of darkness, victory. And your father, oh, he abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I rejoice in my day as I walk the road, I am called up, abide, oh, hallelujah, he abides. As I walk, I walk with me. Hallelujah, He abides. He abides. Hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing in the As I walk, I walk with me. He abides with me. He abides with me. Oh, I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the morning. He blessed Hallelujah. He blessed He blessed Oh, I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the morning. Oh, I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. Oh, yeah, I am a winner. Oh, I'm not a loser. Oh, I am what God says I am. Hallelujah. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am the winner. I am not a loser. I am what God says I am. Oh, I am what God says I am. I am a winner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I am what God says I am. You are, you are a winner. Amen. God says, "Greater is He that is in us." Amen. Oh, He said, He said, He said, "You are of God." Little children, you have overcome them. You have overcome them. You have overcome the temptations. Amen. You have overcome the trials. You have overcome the sicknesses. You have overcome the reproaches. You have become the pains. You have overcome them. You have overcome the cancer. You have overcome the TB. Every disease, every sickness. You Amen. have overcome fear. You have overcome worry. Why do we worry? When the mighty one is in us. Greater is he that is in us. 
The conqueror is in us. The king is in us. The creator is in us. The creator is in us. Can you imagine that? The creator of heaven and earth. The creator, yeah. The one speaks and it comes. Eh? He spoke and flies and fleas came all over the land of Egypt. He spoke and feathered wings fair for the children of Israel. The Bible says, like the sun at the beach. Read the scripture. It said, like the sun at the beach. When they read down the birds, and it said, like the sun at the beach. That's God. And that God is in us. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. What are we afraid of? The creator is in us. Why we doubt? What are you doubting? If you have any doubt, doubt yourself. And doubt your doubt. But not Jehovah. Not the king. Not the creator. Not the creator. Not the ruler. Hallelujah. He said, you have overcome them. Whatever will be. Whatever is coming. Whatever they will come from, you have overcome them. Whatever it be, you have overcome them. Whatever way they will come, whatever form they will come, whether they hide, whatever they, you have overcome them. We are more than conquerors. We have overcome. We are more than conquerors. He said, greater is he, because greater is the one that is in us than the devil that is in the world. What a mighty God we serve. You love Jesus? You love the king? You love him? Brothers, these things that we have been hearing should never go out. Let it be sealed. Because why? To be forewarned. To be, what they call it? To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Is that it? So we are being armed. We are being armed. God has armed us. Let's hold on to that. And let's go forward. Greater is he. That is in me. That is in you. Tell your wife, tell somebody by you, say, greater is the one that is in you than all your problems, than all the mountains, than all the worries, than all the sicknesses, than anything. The one that is in you, say to your mother, say to your father, say to your husband, say to your children, greater is he that is in us, greater is he that is in us than all that is in the world, than all that is in the world, than coronavirus. Than malaria, than tuberculosis, than all the colosis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Let's just take this hour and pray. Knowing that greater is the one that is in us. Are you sick? Is the enemy afflicting you? Remember, tell the devil now, greater is in me. The one that is in me is greater than you, the devil. The one that is in me is greater than your sickness. The one that is in me is greater than you, whoever you are. The one that was in David was greater than Goliath. The one that is in us is greater. Is the greatest of all. Hallelujah. Where did the water come from? He spoke it. Where did the moon come from? He spoke it. He spoke things and they came into being. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Branham said, when the Lord told Peter to put your fish, cast, cast your feet or the hook, or your, your net into the sea. He said there was no fish there, but God put the fish there. Whatever is lacking in your members, may God put it there now. Whatever it be, the healing, the deliverance, the Holy Ghost, may God put it there. Hallelujah. Jesus is the same. Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. Greater is he that is in us than the devil, than the sickness, than the virus, that the complication, that the infectious disease, that HIV, and whatever they are, greater is the one that is in us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the great physician. He's the mighty conqueror. He's the king of glory. He's the Lord of laws. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your assurance again. You told us right from the beginning that we have already overcome. We overcame before the battle started. Because we overcame in you. Because you conquered both seen and unseen world. And when you conquered, we were with you. And we were in you. And you are in us today. And you are greater 
than any complication. You are greater than any sickness. You are greater than cancer. You are greater than TB. You are greater than anything. And Father, we thank you for this assurance. We take your word. We confess your word. Yes, Lord. You that opened the Red Sea. You that made manna to come from heaven. You are that same God today. You opened the rock and the waters came. Let the water of life flow through your people. Fill your people with the Holy Ghost. With healing. With blessing. With deliverance. With peace. With joy. Lord, no matter. David said, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because greater is he that is in me than the devil, than the enemy, than the demons, than the powers of the world. May your anointing be upon your church. Manifest your word in the life of your children. The Bible says you will be manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. And the head did it and the body is doing it today. Because you are in the body and the body goes as the head instructs. So in this hour, we act in your name as we bring our brothers and our sisters, our loved ones, sick and afflicted into your hands. And Lord, we pray that you stretch your mighty hand and manifest your healing power in the life of each and every one of your children. Touch your people. Whatever the complication, you are greater than it. Where doctors cannot reach, you are greater than that. You are greater than medical science. When medical science comes to its end, when the tree of knowledge of good and evil has come to its end, we come on the tree of faith. Because the tree of faith is eternal. May you bless your people and may your word anchor in our souls. Lord, save the sinner. Restore the backslider and let the sick be healed and let the saints be strengthened to the glory of your name. We thank you. We bless you. May your word find a dwelling place in our heart. We thank you. And we pray that you dismiss us with your blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much for how far your grace has brought us. Lord, for this past four months or so, Lord, we have been having the services by this man and ministering to your people. And thank you so much, Lord, for the grace, for the inspiration, for your leadership, Lord. We are trusting that you make a way for us coming week where we'll be together in the church. And we commit this place into your hands. May you sanctify the room. May you sanctify the compound. May you sanctify everything around, Lord. Amen. Lord, we are dependent upon you. Not the fumigators, but the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus. As your people come here and they go out, let it be well with everybody. Even if anybody in some way might have contacted, Lord, this disease, may they be healed. Anybody that will step into this place, may the power of the Almighty God come upon them that they will be healed. Lord, and may everyone be protected from every work of the enemy, Lord. Protect the young, protect the old, protect the children, protect the mothers and the fathers, all the babies and everybody. We commit all things into your hands. Thou who has kept us in these past months will keep us through because greater is our God and greater is you over, and greater, and you are the greatest of all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you once again for our brothers, Lord, that have been in charge of these recordings and the various supports that the brethren have given. May you bless them all. And may you bless the church as your people will be under expectation. May you bless them. Provide and take care of your people. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. So next Sunday, we'll be here. Amen. God willing. Listen, we'll get the announcement to you in the course of the week, but they are giving us two hours. So if we start 10 on the door, some service will start, and 12 will be out. Then, Sons of will start. You don't forget, you have to wash your hand. We'll put the baskets down and the, we have the thermometer gun to shoot your forehead. Check your temperature and then you wash your hands and then we keep the social distancing and then we try maybe the families can be together, uh, especially those with little ones and things and that. 
and we commit all things into the hands of the Lord. Are you happy that we come into church? Those of you who have missed the way, let some people show you the way. At Malededa, yeah, the polyclinic road. You just take the road, you get down at the polyclinic junction, come straight and straight and straight, then you come to the end of the road and it's like a junction. So when you get to that, you take the left and when you take the left, you see a, a little church building behind, in front of you. But look beyond. There's a big one there. That's where the Ibos are gathering. So Sunday, God willing, we'll be together. We'll come together and praise the Lord. Amen. Remember, we have just two hours. So everything that we'll be doing will be ba, 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 ba. I mean, I, and I think what we'll do, the guy interpreters, those who we, we try to make it, those who want you to be interpreted will be at one side and the tree and the elder will be at one side so that the minister can just be able to speak. Because if not, we will not be able to make it. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to come to the church house? Some of you have never been here. But you come and see, and, 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 and we'll see strange things. We'll see babies. We'll see pregnant women. We'll see fat men and fat women. We'll, we'll see a lot of things. Hallelujah. God bless you, church. You. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's sing amen, amen. Or, or maybe dwelling together. Dwelling together. How happy we shall be. Happy we shall be to heart eternity. Oh, we, we shall dwell, dwell in together, my Lord and I. Hallelujah. Dwell in together. Happy we shall be to heart eternity. We shall dwell, yeah, dwell. Hallelujah, dwelling together. How happy we shall be to heart eternity. We shall dwell together. My Lord and I. Hallelujah, dwelling together. How happy we shall be. We heart eternity for Shabbat. Yeah, my Lord and I. Oh, Abraham, blessings are mine. Hallelujah, Abraham, blessings are mine. Yeah, I am blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham, blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham, blessings are mine. Hey, I am blessed in the morning. Blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Oh, so bell, so bell. On your own, on your head. So bell, so bell. On the Arana, your head is so open, so open. On the Arana, your head is so So open, so open, so open. On the Arana, your head is so open, so open. On the Arana, your head is so open, so open. On the Arana, your head is so open. I say, woman is so. Woman is so, 
예수 나여 흥하는 손 예수 흥하는 손 이리 나여 